Yeah, hi everyone. We're uh, in the backyard today, just messing around looking for great locations for these videos. And you know, sometimes it's easier just to get it out of the way with uh, a backyard special. And I'll update you on the garden at the end of this segment. On Saturday, I spent quite a bit of time because it's difficult transcribing uh, Donald Trump's podcast interview with Jake Paul which got like, by, by Saturday when I was writing, it had like 200 million views in two days. And of course, the reason for looking at that was not the MMA chat, because there was a lot of MMA chat. I was highlighting that Trump's identification with the MMA and Jake Paul as a podcast is very eminent, you know, martial mixed martial arts oriented, which, you know, won't help Trump in an area where he's struggling, which is with women. And I published some statistics just showing how there's quite a dichotomy between women and men now, particularly in terms of how liberal they are and how they identify sexually, uh, which is quite dramatic. And Trump doesn't do well with women. He does do well with young men. So he's appealing to his base, needless to say, by being on the Jay Paul show. And once I hacked through all the MMA stuff, what I was interested in is, is just to see exactly, in a specific example, what Trump is saying about Iran and Ukraine. And in both cases, he's essentially saying he's gonna put on very, strict sanctions as were the case under his previous presidency on Iran. No oil exports, certainly not to China, which he specifically references. And secondly, uh, you know, with uh, some confidence that he's going to end the war in Ukraine, which essentially would probably involve him cutting off aid to Ukraine unless they settle with Putin, probably along the existing lines that have been um, sort of turned into trench warfare. And bizarrely, he's using Khalid, the famous uh, MMA fighter, who's kind of notorious for misogyny and for being heavily linked with the Chechen leader, but also mentioning he's a friend of Putin's, that this guy wants Trump to stop the killing, apparently, and therefore Trump is going to do his level best, is kind of the way it comes across in the, uh, in the podcast. But, you know, I do think it's a real outcome that would be, for example, very negative for shipping stocks, obviously, if you had peace in Ukraine. Uh, it probably wouldn't help refining stocks, um, but it would, of course, uh, not make much of a physical difference to the market. Whereas, you know, insofar as Russia hasn't really interrupted its flows, it has extended its shipping lines, which is why you would be bearish shipping. But in the case of uh, Iran, that would that could solve all our problems. That literally could, because if Trump puts severe sanctions on Iran, which I'm sure the Saudis would wholeheartedly approve of. Uh, you could solve the 2025 overhang and beyond in a stroke because you know you'd be talking about a couple of million barrels there to the benefit of the oil balance which is really what we need that's almost exactly the number and we've said that there is an iranian put we've been quite clear about that there's a saudi put we've lost the uae put once they start leaving opec or at least increasing their quota or at least rather increasing their production and exports and so what you're left with essentially is the SPR put, which is pretty feeble that they rebuild the SPR at low prices, but the Iranian put is a doozy, it's a good one. It could make a big difference to balances here. And you know, having got so bearish um, in terms of what came out of the OPEC meeting, uh, you know, there's somewhat reason to be cheerful in terms of the potential for sanctions on Iran. Now, of course, with the Biden White House, you wouldn't expect that. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens next. The, the, the Obama policy, as far as I could tell, was to be frenemies of Israel, frenemy of Saudi and frenemy of Iran. And the net beneficiary of that positioning was essentially a bit of a deterioration in, in particularly Israeli relationships, but also a massive up, uptick in Iran's position versus the US. And of course, Trump made that very much the opposite where he was first visit of his presidency was to Saudi and he flew, which uh, traditionally would be a visit to Canada for a new US president, by the way. He went to Saudi Arabia, which was remarkable. And then even more remarkably, he flew from Saudi to Israel. So he really set the tone there for what would go on in the Middle East. And you can expect, you know, I think some fairly dramatic shifts if Trump wins in terms of both Ukraine and Russia. And that's essentially what he directly uh, claimed, as nearly said, bragged about in the uh, in the Project Paul podcast. So that's that's one of the more interesting things we've seen this week. The day before, on the bear side, we were talking about gas station stocks. Uh, Casey's has been doing great and uh, popped last week on its results. And of course, you have Murphy USA and um, Kushtard doing very well as well. And all of those are obviously very defensive plays on two things. The first is lower oil prices, which tend to widen their margins. But actually their margins have structurally improved post COVID really dramatically. And the reason for that is essentially consolidation. I've got to stop saying essentially, I mean, 
is consolidation in the uh, gas station business, which can keep going and keep going. And so they're all moving to these mega sites, which are structurally more profitable because they sell more other stuff. And so in the case of Casey's, it's the fifth, fifth biggest pizza chain in the US amongst other uh, really big market positions that it has outside of gasoline. So we were quite uh, interested in those stocks in, in the research on Friday. Uh, apart from that, you know, we're very much into the summer doldrums, so, so volumes are quite low and generally speaking, we're just at the mercy of this Nvidia market and AI market, which, you know, there's nothing really to stop it going at this stage. Um, the only other thing would be the Fed. And of course, with last week behind us, we're now through the latest sort of major news, month to month news from the Fed. And, you know, the market is, it seems to take everything bullishly now. To me, there's a battle between the economic slowdown that's clearly going on everywhere but AI, more or less, and you know the market's willingness to buy AI, which is why it's getting so concentrated. And you know, I don't need to go through all the various statistics that underlie the concentration. Everybody knows it. And again, today, you know, you've had confirmation that a big ETF is going to be taking a whole lot more Nvidia on board, actually, to the cost of Apple. But you know, it's just the dominant theme, and you can't really fight it. Quite interesting that a couple of the plays that we've highlighted this year, last year, have had bad days today, but which we like. Yesterday we were highlighting First Solar, which is the only US solar panel manufacturer, and we think that's hugely valuable, and we don't find the stock that expensive at all with tremendous earnings for the visibility. You might want to take a look at that one. I'm not recommending you buy it. You've got to decide that for yourself. Um, and then, of course, we had Vistra, which is coming back quite a bit at the moment, which, which nevertheless, you know, is a great IPP play on, on Texas power going crazy. And at the moment, one of the reasons we were talking about power again yesterday in the Sunday note was just that we were about to hit super hot weather here in New York. And that's going to be a very red, actually ex-Texas, weirdly enough, but essentially the U.S. heat map looks extremely red for this week. And you know, it's June, so the potential for a really hot summer, which is bullish oil demand as much as anything. Uh, globally, certainly, there's a heat wave in China right now too. Uh, these things do add significant amounts of oil uh, to the balance. Javier Blas, the uh, Bloomberg journalist, is out today talking about Saudi reducing its export, excuse me, consumption of oil, crude oil particularly, as one of the main themes of the next five years, which is another bearish theme, and the Saudis talk about that. And in fact, in my previous transcript series prior to Donald Trump, I was transcribing the Saudi oil minister and he was talking directly about a million barrels a day more Saudi exports as a result of their reduction in domestic crude burn, which peaks very dramatically in summer and is, you know, reduced just about to zero in winter. Same winter, same summer time frame as us, August being the hottest month in Saudi, basically. Anyway, once you've thought about all that, uh, I hope you have a very good week. Um, it's one of my favorite things ever in my life is, is big soccer tournaments. And, um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty thrilled that the backdrop here to uh, beautiful summer week is going to be a ton of soccer games. Further to the beauty, one thing that's come out is uh, me lilies. Much taller than I thought they would be, actually, but they have come through. This one's quite dramatic. And the lilies are generally lovely. And I'm sure you'll also appreciate the the lilies are relatively new that's why i'm not talking about them like i don't know what happens with them these things i know really well and they're actually a lot smaller this year they normally come out like huge great big ice creams the problem with these guys is that they they go from this wonderful white during the course of really june july for not long about maybe about a month but then they actually turn a kind of disappointing brown but for this time of year they're absolutely gorgeous have a great week enjoy summer and take care